Dr. Abu Suleiman's work on marital discord is path-breaking. His insights into the subject and his words of caution are noteworthy. I don't look at any issue unless I know the nature of the issue. At the same time, I try to put it in the big picture. I don't take it pieces. So, I said, you know, I know the ayah, which says, when there is, you know, dispute and uh, lack of harmony between husband and wife, Quran asks that the husband should advise if the wife did not respond, then he show his unhappiness by not anymore staying with her in the bed. And then it says the simple direct word is Idribuhunna beat them. Now this this I know in Arabic language it widely words used for indirect meaning, not direct meaning. So I said let me first you know, look into the basics of Islam. How it works with this proposition of, of beating. I said to myself, would Islam agree or approve that a, an adult beat another adult to force him or her to something they don't want to do? The answer is clear for me, no, it won't. I know Quran made it clear that the relationship between husband and wife, it is love and compassion. Is this any sort of love and compassion? Of course not. Also, the relationship uh, is beating, a way to resolve dispute. Of course not. Now, you can force somebody to do something they don't like, in one case, when they have no choice. But in Islam, you know, a wife has the same right like man. She can seek divorce. And uh, if she doesn't want to stay in, in, in the marriage, she has the right to leave. The only condition here that they don't allow that this to be a mean of getting some benefits, uh, material benefits, because that could threaten the, the family, either from the wife or her family. The man, when he, when he divorces, he loses, because he loses the dowry, he, uh, the expense uh, and maintenance her for some time, and then to remarry, so he already getting punished. But if the wife can take the dowry and whatever she got and run away uh, without giving any reason, that's her right to ask to, to leave the... So you don't encourage this by allowing her to gain from this uh, action. Anyway, so the wife can also leave the marriage. You cannot force her to stay. Then beating is not going to work. So I, so I realized there is a problem. So the first thing I did, I looked at the word daraba, beat. How it is being used in Quran. It used in many, many places. In all of them, never means beating, except in three places. Uh, one of them, for example, when uh, Allah asked Moses, Moses to hit the stone so the water will come out. That is, of course, no doubt is beating. Then I said, let us look how the scholars get to the notion that beating the woman to force her to abide, how they get this idea. I found there is two traditions they misinterpret. The first one, a woman from Ansar came to the Prophet وسلم, she was beaten. He was very angry and he said he's going to be punished the same. And then say, they said the ayah revealed and the woman, uh, the man was not beaten. And the Prophet وسلم, said I wanted something and Allah ordered something else and what Allah ordered is good. Now. In the first place, the Prophet ﷺ was not happy with beating. So it is not going to be an excuse to say he, he has the right. Now the situation here is not he has the right to beat or not. But the point here, if 
beating happened. For example, it is wrong to steal, but when somebody stole, that's a different story, how to handle the situation. So the question here is how to handle the situation if the man beat his wife. Now, what the Prophet wanted is to publicly, of course, take uh, beat the man in the same manner he did. This way, the solution the Prophet ﷺ thought of, it was not the right one. Because this will be the direct cause for divorce. And of course there is children, there is family relations, and there is going to be enmity that is not proper in this situation. What Allah asked, ordered, that they have to go into trying to resolve. Either they agree to stay together and behave themselves, or to divorce without going into fights. That is the proper way, because in the process, you know, Quran, if after going into all this, trying the two between them, themselves to resolve, if they could not, then they uh, select one from the family of the husband and one from the family of the, of the wife and sit with them and try to resolve. If they accept, alhamdulillah, if not, if they want to divorce, that's their rights. No problem. So, the point here, they misinterpret that tradition as if to give the husband the right to be, that is why he was not punished. No, it is not. This is a tradition to deal with the thing when it happened, regardless if it is right or wrong, how to resolve. The second tradition, which also misinterpret, the Prophet ﷺ said it clearly, be them lightly. He's talking about women. Now, he was not talking about dispute bit and misunderstanding between husband, wife and husband. He was talking direct in politely about adultery. فَاحِشَةٍ مُبَيِّنَةٍ وَيُطِيرُنَ فُرَشَكُمْ مَنْ تَكْرَهُنَا It is a clear misconduct. And allowing ones whom you hate to see at your home to be there. Now, what the Prophet Sallallahu did, it is very, very gentle to resolve a problem in a very gentle manner. Now, in this case, when the woman misbehave, the father cannot complain. The husband cannot complain. The, child, the son cannot, or daughter cannot complain. The brother cannot complain. Would she go playing rampant their uh, the situation? Now, usually, and it's still until now it happens, they call it committing the, cri the honor crime. They kill the woman. So the Prophet ﷺ was saying in that women, still human being, they could make mistakes. The wali uh, al the guardian, if it is the father or the, the brother, should hit gently, not to take revenge. So really he was handling a situation in the best possible manner to resolve serious problem. It has nothing to do with misunderstanding between husband and wife. That was another mistake. Now, the scholars realized that really allowing beating, it is not desirable. So they said, uh, Ibn Abbas عنه, said, you know, beat her with the uh, swak, that is, you know, the stick to clean your mouth, say like a pencil. Okay, that resolved the problem in one way, that is, there is no beating. But I cannot see in which way after advising, after showing that you are unhappy, that touching the shoulder with a pencil will resolve any issue. That could not be. Now also, let us go back and mention, when I looked at the meaning, at the word daraba in different form, direct and indirect, the meaning was, the general meaning, to take, go away, to cover, to separate. So that was the general meaning in this uh, use, uh, like Taraba Allah, مثلاً, Allah gave an, gave an example, gave an example, has nothing to do with Taraba. Dribu fil ard, you know, go, uh, travel in the, in the world, this has nothing to do with, with beating. Anyway, so I said, let us look at the Prophet ﷺ, what he did. 
when he was angry with them and the dispute between him and his wives. He left the homes to a place called Al Mashraba for a whole month without telling anybody anything. After that, he declared, There is a problem with my wives. Now, we find he did not beat anyone. He did not order somebody to do the beating because some people would say the Prophet himself would never do it by, by himself. He doesn't punish by himself. He asks others to do the punishment. Nor he allowed anybody to beat because Abu Bakr wanted to beat uh, Sayyida Aisha, his daughter Aisha. The Prophet did not allow him. So Umar ibn Khattab wanted to beat his uh, daughter Hafsa. The Prophet didn't allow him. That means the Prophet ﷺ, the first one to disobey the order of the Quran. That's not possible. Okay, let us ask ourselves, I said, would leaving the house add to the process of reconciliation? Yes, because leaving the house is the full picture of the separation of, or of divorce. The woman would know now he is not there, his care is not there, the relationship is not there. If she really wants divorce, that's her right. If no, she is playing games, she'd know now it is serious. She would realize the full results. So this really will add to the process of reconciliation. Now, that means the word Baraba in this, in this ayah, it is not direct meaning. It means separation leaving the house and that is the very proper to the situation to bring reconciliation and better understanding and keep the relationships. Now some of the scholars they said it's okay, it, we like this conclusion, but why did we not realize this for such a long time? I said simply because of the methodology. You did not analyze, understand situation, the action and reaction, and in which way to bring situation, and what kind of results happen to every action. That's, I think, where uh, it was just looking from linguistic point of view. That is, I think, very important to understand in dealing with the Sharia.